<sighs> Welcome to episode 114 of Star Wars and Scotch. We're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff today. Ubisoft leaks for the Star Wars game Bad Batch Season 2 Episode 3 and a rumor about new Star Wars programming. Tim, how are hey. you today? Yeah, not bad. Feeling pretty good. Cool. Gonna head off to Colorado tomorrow. That's so exciting. I'm jealous. I love Colorado. Yeah. Well, you've been telling me that I need more vacations, so. Mm hmm You absolutely do, so I'm very so happy. It's, it, it's bad when a bunch of people are like, hey, when you take a vacation, I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Uh, like, hey, you uh, might seem a little tense. You might need to get out of here for a little bit. But I'm a streamer. I don't know what you mean. I'm not allowed to take vacations. <laughs> What's the V word? Ah. Uh, but Tim, I'm sure you're going to be throwing in your suitcase some delicious King's Coast coffee for you to bring to Colorado with you. Uh, so you don't have to drink like hotel. No, you're, you're not. You're not. I'm not going to bring it. I'm not lugging a grinder across the country, but I will be forever thinking about King's Coast coffee while I'm in the mountains of Colorado. Like, okay. So here's the thing though, Kevin is like, as much as I want to try to like sell out for our coffee company, I take a lot of pride in finding like little coffee shops whenever I travel. Somewhere. Sure. Because sure. like finding like those, like the things you've like this, I mean, like I think we've got a great lineup of coffees, but you never know what the other person's got. So it's always kind of like, to, like you're kind of like testing the water to see what the competition's got. You hang so. out with Wayne and Pete. They do the same thing. We like when we were in Boston for coffee expo, we went to the La Colombe store and checked out what they had. And so, no, we love, we love coffee. So that's how we learn and, and it refined the palate. So it does. And like it, I learned how to make different drinks and stuff. Like I made, a, you know, just like I've been trying to make all different types of coffee drinks lately. So they were getting hammered making that that one drink the other day that they the were testing out. The matcha? Yeah. Or the they're, other one. No, the other one. The one with oh, the, the, one, the alcohol. Bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. That one looks really that good. <laughs> yeah. That looks really, really good. Speaking of getting hammered, you can check out our uh, Heartbreaker roast. Um, that one's gonna be that's gonna be special, huh? Uh, it's gonna be yeah. in barrels, huh? It is, it is, yeah. The barrels, uh, it, it's it's Wayne's been doing a lot of stuff with the barrels, which is cool. I've enjoyed actually seeing what he does with them. So, um, make sure you follow on TikTok if you want to see processes and all that stuff. Uh, Wayne is, posts all the time. About this is one of my favorite roasts that we do. I mean, I love our Christmas roast, but the Heartbreaker Reserves really that's a special one. It is a special one, and now it's going to be barrel aged. It's going to be even more special. So more make sure special. you get your hands on that. Join the Kings Club, kingscoastcoffee.com. Tim, is Lab doing anything to anytime soon? Because I have this very comfy sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now. I think right now we're holding off until uh, 429 day. So make sure you're following Lab across Lab 77 across the board because uh, 429 will be here before you know it. If you don't know, it will be. If you don't know, <laughs> 429 is Tim's holiday for his cult. I mean, chat. And um, <laughs> they they go big. They go big. They celebrate. So uh, I wanted to do some sort of, I don't know, cake or something this year. But Tim doesn't eat cake. So I'd have to. I mean, it, I like, could eat a cake, though. I'd have to, like, make it a certain way that you'd eat it. You won't no, I'd eat, eat it, it if I just make a cake. I mean, if like there was dairy and stuff in it, then I mean, you'd have to deal with me after the fact. I don't, I'm not going to the bathroom with you. That's that's between you and the toilet, bud. Oh. I'll find a way. Don't worry. Oh, there's right. that. Isn't that? Isn't that? Does that vegan dessert place do custom? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go there. There we go. Problem solved. Yeah, it's called Hail Life Bakery in Tampa. It's really good. So four four two nine uh, Lab seventy seven. Make sure you're checking it out. It's time to talk about this again, too, Tim. Are you ready? GCX tickets are on sale. <laughs> oh, man. Go to gcxevent.com uh, and get your tickets now. This year is going to be big. We, we are having some serious discussions. The world is back to what it was. So, I mean, last year it was great to be back in person and see everyone. But this year the event is back in full force. Um, so many exciting things. Uh, after parties, things like that. I just I can't I can't say anything yet because I need some I's and T's dotted and crossed respectively. But GCXevent.com. Make sure you go get your tickets. You can come hang out with me. You can come hang out with Tim. You can come hang out with Paul, Lupo, the whole gang. You can you you had you a line to your little you thing might hang out. Hey. It's, you can hang out with Kevin. No, you guys are yeah. cool. You can hang out with me too. Good luck hanging out with me. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Kevin, I like. I'll be right there. And then you never see Kevin, me. Kevin's that way. Although last year I was pretty relaxed, a yeah, because of marijuana, and b because of uh, uh, I wasn't like the main only main person, so it was nice. Can we say that on Star Wars and Scotch? 
marijuana. <laughs> Say it like the remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Say it with your chest. Pot, you know, marijuana. (laughs) Yeah, I think we can. I mean, all right, here, I'll fix it. Spice. I had spice at the event. Ah, that's essentially what it is. I mean, come on, they have space weed in in Star. It's probably not weed. It's probably more like cocaine or something, to be honest. So because they like huff it, they like. Is it like yeah. paint? Yeah, it's like space. It's like space. Sitting crack. in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Bad Batch, season yeah. two, episode three. I really enjoyed this episode. Here, good. Here's the thing that messed with me is it felt like a Clone Wars episode, right? Like Almost definitely. Everything about it was very Clone Wars-esque. But it was flipped. The droids were the good guys now. Yeah, I had a hard time. My brain was was having a hard time with that. It was weird. You're like, oh no, it's a droid. And Cody, you're like, you know Cody, you've known Cody. Yeah. So it was just, it was very, bah. it was weird, right? It was awkward. It was weird to be, to be. You couldn't tell if like, were they bad guys or was this everything that the separatists were trying to prevent? And like the real separatists, not Dooku, right? The people who believe Dooku's lies. Well, even what she said about Dooku, that Dooku was right when he said that the Republic will turn into something much worse. Right, but um, that was a part of, like, he was trying to feed them this, the, the, the ideologies of what was going to happen before, like, if if, if they were going to become, like, this evil big power, which the, the, the Republic wasn't trying to do that for the most part. Like, the, the, core, the core principles of the Republic was, was really, like, peace and unity, and, like, you look at the High Republic, right? Everything that they're trying to achieve right now is kind of like what they were trying to achieve before, uh, before Palpatine came into power. And so, like, those ideologies, they were still trying to hold true. And then you have Dooku who came in and started feeding them lies of, like, what's going to happen if someone like Palpatine was to take over? But that's what was going to happen anyways. That's how Mm -hmm. you got them all riled up. Yeah. it. The political overtones of this one were super interesting because it showed us, you know, we've gone through the Clone Wars now, and Mm -hmm. we've seen that side. Now you're seeing the other side post empire which was very interesting yeah because it's not something we've really seen a ton of we've seen a little bit of it especially in rebels and whatnot but it was super interesting like they this was straight up separatist um uh planet and you know they were saying no we told the republic the same thing and i thought it was very interesting that they put in there that she brought a peace agreement for the separatists and the republic together and palpatine Mm -hmm. when he was chancellor was the one who said no obviously Mm -hmm. we know why he would say no but it's exposing the cracks which is why cody and even crosshair is now having second thoughts yeah about how this is all playing out i think by the end of this we'll have crosshair with the bad batch or he'll have this like redemption arc where he dies you know like he'll give himself as like the final moment of just like ah go and then he'll you know gone but like, you, I think Cody's going to end up with Rex at some point. Yeah, it would make the most sense to see Cody with Rex. But we know in the long term that doesn't happen. So either Cody dies or he goes off somewhere else. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the part that I'm really curious about because we know we don't see him in Rebels with the older <clears throat> clones. So something happens between now and then where Cody's just gone. I, I would they, love I would love for him to have closure with Obi Wan though. Like that's so where I was badly, going, dude. Is there some sort of scenario where Cody dies, like saving Obi Wan to redeem oh, I himself? I want that so badly, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I think uh, it'll happen in Obi Wan season two. Well, I mean, that's what we were hoping for in the first one. We were hoping there'd be some type of like Cody moment where you know, like those two, like just have that that moment together, and there's peace. And it hasn't happened yet. I don't think Obi Wan's gonna get that closure because, like, how we see him in Kenobi or in in Obi Wan. Ben is all like emotionally messed up and he's got the PTSD when he sees the clone. So that right there tells me that he didn't get to have that closure with Cody. So something happens. I wonder if Crosshair kills him. Could be. Could be. I, I mean, we'll see. Crosshair seemed a little bothered by the whole scenario, which shocked me. Because How many more so executions mainline. are we going to get? Oh, come on. There's been so many lately, Kevin. How many executions have we seen across the board? They're trying to drive home. The, I think they're trying to shut the Empire apologists up. I know you and I joke all the time that you are. Yep. I know you're not at the end of the day, but they're trying to shut them up with this Empire did nothing wrong stuff. They're like, no, the Empire's done plenty wrong, and we're going to put it right in your face. <laughs> Listen here, you Star Wars fascists. And they, 
And they're doing it in a way that doesn't absolve the Republic of the terrible things they've done too. But they're really trying to drive home the point like, we modeled this F. They are space Nazis. I really want you all to understand that they are space Nazis. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're seeing the eradication of the clones. We know how they feel about aliens and things like that. So mm-hmm. you're, I think Vice Admiral Rampart is really primed to just, just be the asshole that we need um, to just hate his guts. Yeah. And and I think they're really gearing him up. I could I could see him being live action down the road too. I think so. I could see him playing a part or a role yeah. in something, you know. He's he seems to be the one that they're like inflating as, you know, he hates Tarkin. Mm-hmm. He's he's bothered by Tarkin and the power Tarkin has. So you're seeing the infighting there, but also the fact that he has so much control over this this program now. Yeah. And and they're really trying to they're trying to I don't want to say redeem the clones because at the end of the day, it's not really the clones fault. What happens? They're trying to humanize them. Right. And give them a choice. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe that chip in their head, it wears off after a while, you know, and they can actually make their own decisions like Cody's doing right now. So um, I think bad batches is pretty on point for what we said it was going to be where it's humanizing the clones and, you know, giving them individual characteristics and redemption and things like that. So I'm interested to see, you know how many more and we know rex makes it to return of the jedi because he's in the movie wink wink um so has that been confirmed is that actually him i feel like it was but i don't want to say that for sure because somebody's got we got Mo- mokiv and serrano mixed up last week and somebody pointed that out for us so i want to happen uh the planet that is in thrawn is not serrano it's mokiv i i will be honest with you don't remember yeah, somebody corrected us on social media, and I was like, oh, you're right. I don't remember. Uh, I remember you talking about the book. I don't remember what planet we were talking about. I saw that comment, and I was like, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> it was about it was seeing quick, Serrano. You, I remember you had quickly like brought it up, and it just pfft, wasn't paying attention. It was about seeing Serrano in, in, in the animated episode. That was all. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I honestly don't remember if that's canon. Paul, if you could look that up, that'd be great. Um, but... Yeah, but, we know Rex lives at least through Rebels because we see him in Rebels and whatnot mm-hmm. anyway. So um, Cody is the big question mark. And I have a feeling Cody's going to die doing something heroic because that would be a great send off to him. And it would redeem his arc from what he does to Obi-Wan. And uh, Revenge I mean, the like, Sith. Does he really need redemption? We all know that he got brainwashed. They don't, but they want the clones to be a heroic part of the story. They yeah, want I them agree. to have their moments, yeah. um, you know, and we, we saw it with... Uh, a few of the clones in Clone Wars mm-hmm. um, that had crazy moments and then ended up dying. So um, I think now that they've died for the Republic, we can see them die for the Rebellion too, um, which would, I think it paints them in a great light because, you know, now that their command has kind of degraded or whatever, I don't know what the terminology would be, but since that chip in their head is not functioning the way it was before, they can make yeah. their own decisions and we see at heart they are good people. Yeah, I, I thought it was really interesting, too, what uh, what the Vice Admiral had said to Crosshair. He was like, all these clones that are surround you go AWOL. <laughs> Just like, <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> I like, I wonder I wonder if he's questioning Crosshair. I'm sure I wonder he, if he is. I wonder if he thinks that Crosshair maybe is also a defector as well or is trying to defect. Crosshair also seems very annoyed with his life. Yeah, well, did you hear the part where he was talking about how many rotations were you left on that? Or how long were you on that? 32 rotations. Oh, my God. On Camino by himself. He was there for an entire month on that platform. Yep. (laughs) Oh, my God. And we don't know how long a Camino day is. Like, how long is that actual rotation? And and on top of it, too, with that, like, Crosshair's a fucking badass, dude. (laughs) Mm -hmm. He was probably fishing off the dock. Yeah, like he, I mean, they all are. Don't get me wrong. The other four are too, but he crosshairs a badass. Dude, the way he was throwing those reflective discs up the stairwell and just making just <laughs> trick shots. Of Cody's stuff. like, where do you want it? Throw it as far as you can. Throw it as far as you can. <laughs> just, <laughs> so good, dude. So good. Even the, even before that, when he was coaxing the tank to aim right at him. Oh my God, I didn't think you could just fire down the barrel of a tank and you could blow up its charge. Like, that was wild. I mean, if you, if you think about the the his blaster and how powerful that thing probably is, mm-hmm. I could see that being 
legitimate. Of course, we're talking again. Universal well, it's a laser, so I mean, like metal. So it just it just bounces into the tube and it hits the that. The and it's got to be the, a hefty uh, charge, even if you're even if you're comparing it to IRL rounds. You know, the homeboy's got I, I I don't know what sniper rifle you would compare that to, but you're talking a, a pretty high millimeter round on a on a sniper rifle. Well, it's also is it late? Is it energy or ballistic? You know, is right. it like what kind of what kind of weapon is it really? I would assume it's an energy weapon. I would too. And so, because that was really cool. I've, I don't think we've ever seen a clone blow up a tank like that before. I don't, nope. I don't. I don't think I've ever. Yeah, I don't. I can't really remember a time where someone just fired a round down the barrel of a tank. And then he was picking off everyone on the top. Yeah, he's, yeah off the ramparts. He was. He's just so cool. He's and just the a same neat thing. guy hitting the stuff in the hallway with the assassin droids and banking them off and yeah it was just, it was a good action episode it, like like you said it felt like clone wars and then cody with his knife and a little vibro blade took out took out two of them um i the only thing the only problem i had was i liked that the droidica was hard to kill because they always are those are so good i felt like the assassin droids were a little too easy to kill they, man that's the one issue i've always had with those guys it's like they look really cool and they're like they're neat because they can like crawl on the walls and stuff, but they always just end up getting taken out too easily. Like yeah. every time in Battlefront Two, though, those guys are a pain in the ass. Big like, time, terrifying. They flip. They've got like they've got uh, predator vision. They've got like vibro swords. When they introduce them too in Clone Wars, they're supposed to be like this elite part of the Separatist army too. Mm-hmm. So you know, like spec that's ops always, or something. That's always been the problem with like any Star Wars bad guy. You know, it's like they always look really, really cool. And on the surface, they're a little scary. But at the end of the day, they just get melted through. Like, it's just like kind of like, oh, man. Like, like Gamorreans? The, yeah, like the destroy, like those droid, the guys could, could have been like, those could have been it. But like the one part where you just like, he throws the grenade on the on the B1 and then shoots the B1. And the B1 falls over through the shield and blows up the droid. Destroyer. It's like, ah, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Gamorreans, big green pigs with axes. You're like, whoa. But at the uh-huh. end of the day, they're, they're just, all like, uncoordinated. They, can, and they can't do anything. If you push one over, it probably couldn't get up. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I don't. Even Rancors. Look at Rancors. They're, oh. you know. So, is what it, although, no, I won't say about Rancors. They're, that true? We've, Boba Fett we've was, good, was yeah, kicking some ass with the Rancors. We've gotten some good Rancors lately. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I'll give the And Bad Batch Season 1, we had the Rancor, too, remember? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, that was, that was bad, Batch. we seem to be on a very, we have so much bad batch to go uh, though. When do, you, when do you think we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of it though? This is the feeling. This is usually this is they don't, they don't start till like mid season. So I would okay. say probably episode six, seven or eight, we would start to really see stuff materialize. I, I don't want to say filler, but this did not feel like a filler. Damn it, I, feel I like just it wanted to call it a filler episode. You, everyone hates when you do that. They hate it when I call it filler episode. This advanced the plot because we hadn't seen Crosshair the first two episodes. Yeah. We needed to see where he was at. It yep. brought Cody back. It showed us that Cody went AWOL. Like, I feel like a lot of important things happened here. And I think seeing a Separatist planet was very important in, very in where so. we are in the timeline. So, I agree. Um, you know, and, and their refusal to, you know, we were never part of the Republic. So why would we be part of your empire is a very, very, very valid, um, I don't want to say excuse, very valid reason to protect your sovereignty. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm very interested to see how that plays out. And if we're going to see more separatist planets fall this way, um, maybe not in such an elaborate story, but even in passing hearing and, and whatnot. And yes, keep, keep, keep amping up. Vice Admiral Rampart being a son of a bitch. I'm really enjoying that because that guy's just a dick. And and we you need one. You need someone to hate. It was like, what's his face in Rogue One? Uh, Inspector Krennic. Oh, yeah. My God, I hated that man by the end of the movie. So, yeah, just more of those. We, yeah. That's, that's what we like to see. Oh, anyway, moving hey, on. Lou. Yeah. 300 pristine original... Kenner Star Wars figures <laughs> found in a collector's closet in Chicago. Hold We're on, talking. Wait a second. Did this guy die? Uh, I don't know if he died. Uh, was he just uh, spring cleaning one day and he's like, oh, I found all my toys. Like, see, d- Yeah, it's a collector's closet. The collector primarily okay, so coin operated vending machines. Is this a closet that belongs to the collector? Yes. So it's in and his the house. collection. 
Well, it's in a store to CEO Tom Tallworthy at a coin op show who requested photos of the toys and was amazed to discover they were all in mint condition and packaged in their original Kenner factory boxes. A stockpile of vintage, vintage toys, which was which was discontinued in 1985. OK, I want to go back to this beginning. How it just as a collector's about, closet. Yeah, but how did this guy forget about 300 Star Wars toys in his closet? I don't think he forgot about it. I think he was sitting on it because it's hmm. duplicates. If you look at the picture, it's three, mostly three of each. Okay. Man, I remember some of these. And some of the toys that never even made it to store shelves, which is interesting too. I had some of these. Oh, <clears> man. <throat> See, I wish I could go back and tell little, little seven-year-old me not to open those. Uh, interestingly, the history of the original, this comes from Star Wars Newsnet, by the way, uh, original Star Wars action figures is linked very closely to the uncertainty surrounding Star Wars release. After an intensely rocky production stage with a skeptical cast and crew, few foresaw the success of Star Wars. Kenner was the toy company first contracted to produce Star Wars merchandise. We all had, if you're in our age group, you had Kenner Star Wars. Probably had, yeah. Uh, they created a modest line of toys entirely insufficient for the Christmas period of 1977 when the wild popularity of Star Wars left every parent searching shelves for a piece of its universe. That was the Beanie Baby cabbage patch of oh that Oh, my God. Year. My parents collected Beanie Babies in the early 90s, especially during the elections. Holy shit. As a solution, Kenner sold boxes containing an early bird certificate that people could fill out with their names and addresses and send off in the mail. Once Kenner had caught up to the demand, they would send back a special four-figure set which we've seen, including Luke Skywalker, what? Leia, R2-D2, and Chewbacca. Eight other figures were eight later added to the line, including Darth Vader and Han Solo. They would just send them to you? Yes, because you were an early purchaser of them. It's Back crazy. when people valued you as a customer instead of you just your, your wallet. Uh, the Luke Skywalkers with double telescoping lightsabers from the early bird package recovered in the Morphe fine are now uh, worth up to 20 grand. Just the Luke Ooh. Skywalker. Other highlights are the original 21 figures released by Kenner, including a death commander that was pulled because the manufacturer decided the word death was unsuitable for kids. And now we have death troopers. <laughs> Which I'm assuming are based on that. I'm trying to find a... Is there a picture of death commanders? Let's see. Death commander Star Wars figure. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Oh. So death commanders were the guys who were controlling the Death, the Star. death Star. And they're yeah. those guys with those awesome helmets. Yeah. Yeah. They look like a dark helmet, man. <clears throat> Hailed as a once in a lifetime find by Lang. The Morphe find is a reminder of how Star Wars itself has become a timeless treasure. And whilst the monetary value of its merchandise only increases over time, its value to fans will always remain priceless. Morphe find goes to auction on Wednesday, February 1st. If Tim, you want in, you can mm -hmm. uh, the full it online catalog is there i like investing my money kevin i feel like this is one where my wife would be like did you make a good choice at this stage decision? investing in something like that is probably not a great idea unless you're literally like a oh. multi-millionaire mm -hmm. then i would do it i'd be like yeah give me three of those i'll, I'll pay 80 grand mm -hmm. for those yeah, but I mean, okay, 10 but, years? Let, but let's be honest though is that is that value going to increase still or is that going to be like the highest it's going to go. I don't know. If you we'll keep see. it in the original packaging, the value will continue to go up over time. Yeah, but you're not going to get your money. You're not going to get your money back right away. You're going to have to wait a while. No, it's a 10 or 20 year investment easily. That's a lot, though. Even mm -hmm. my brother-in-law, he still has Transformers and T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the packaging at my in-law's house. And like, he's like, oh, this one's up to 90 bucks. I'm like, that's it. It was like a five dollar toy when he got it. And like 30 years later, it's only 90 bucks. Yeah. But, so, oh, well. yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, like, shout out to uh, the guy who forgot about his toys in the closet. And that's true. Paul said if, if it's a full set, obviously it's going to be worth more as a full set than it will be as an individual figurine. So I yeah, guess man. I'm just a terrible nerd because when it comes to like that type of stuff, I'm just like, oh, that's just going to get dust and just one more thing you got to pack. I just I mean, I, I have very I have very valuable baseball baseball cards in my house. Like I have a baseball card that's worth like twenty two thousand dollars in you know, it's in casing and everything like that. I guess it's I was just a terrible child. I just didn't it's, select. It's Willie Mays stuff. signed, by the way, is my. It's Willie Mays, 1960. I don't remember what year. OxyClean guy? 
Willie Mays. No, that's Billy Mays. Willie Mays, the baseball player. Okay. Hall of Famer. You don't know who that so is. So for someone oh, God, who God, thinks Devin. that Willie Mays is the OxyClean guy, can you tell me who it is? Willie Mays was one of the greatest outfielders. In the Willie Mays here for OxyClean. That's Billy Mays. Billy Mays is the OxyClean guy. I don't have anything signed by Billy Mays. That's right. Willie Mays, Tim. Well, you know what else is going on, Kevin? What else is going on? Leaks. <laughs> lots of lots of leaks. Well, let's take a quick break and then we'll talk about your leaks, okay? Yeah, but I'm really leaky, Kevin. I want to talk about it now. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll pay some bills and then you can leak all over the place. <laughs> okay. Uh, what a weird episode. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. Ah, oh, Kevin, I'm leaking everywhere. Ah, that's disgusting. Just can't keep. I can't keep the Star Wars news. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and we're back. Oh man, you know the one. The one thing that people hate the most in the gaming industry is uh, their game getting talked about before they get to talk about it. And by they, I mean the developers, the publishers, the marketing teams, all those people that work really, really hard to uh, to bring to you the the news and joy of a brand new game coming out. And uh, unfortunately, Ubisoft is not uh, is not protected from said leaks, and uh, nope. we got some very very inf uh, exciting information about their upcoming open world Star Wars game. And the leak happened after we recorded last Wednesday, so of we're course. talking about it this week. <laughs> Hooray! Um, yeah, we should we should put that on a shirt like a Star Wars and Scott shirt. That's I don't know. We'll talk about it phrasing. next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it next week. That's a really good merch idea. <laughs> Write that down. That's Write a good one. Notes. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll talk about it next week. Star Wars and Scotch. So, um, according to the report, Ubisoft's massive Star Wars game, this, uh, what we're reading from, comes from thegamer.com, uh, will feature a, quote, fully open, seamless universe akin to that found in No Man's Sky. And I don't quote, believe it. I don't believe that either. Okay, I believe it to an extent. Seamless meaning no loading screens. Sure, I could see that. Like jump to leave atmosphere, yeah, jump so to hyperspace. It'll be like star, so like I think it's better off saying it'll be like Starfield. Yeah, it's not going to be, but even Starfield has, I think, it's on tens rails. of thousands of planets. But it, it has is. tens it's, of thousands of planets. It does, but and it's not, but they're not procedurally generated. No, no, and no so man's sky these will not, planets. And, so, and, and that's also no man's sky is is universal. This will be galactic. We and, are only and, dealing within the Star Wars galaxy. We're not going to go outside of any other galaxy. And Tim and I will both go to, I'm assuming Tatooine will be the game. Tim and I will both go to Tatooine. If I try to get Tim to go to a planet in No Man's Sky, it's very difficult to get to get someone to visit the planet you're on. In yeah, no because Man's it's Sky. universal. Good luck trying to find the galaxy that your friend's at. Right. So, uh, and it's already been proven too, even though they said it's technically like multiplayer, you can't just stumble across your friend either, even no. if you're on the same planet, because people prove that by actually finding each other and standing in the same place and, they weren't there. If you gave um, me a Star Wars game that was like Star Citizen, then like uh, that would make me happy, you know. But I mean, like Star Citizen in the we like, never see you again. Well, yeah, I'd be gone forever. Um, but like Star Citizen only deals within a solar system, right? And, and then that's, so like, and that's crazy enough because there's like there's a bunch of planets and asteroid systems and a bunch of stuff that you can go in, and that's overwhelming. So, like, the thought of a galactic game where I'm not dealing with just one solar system, but I'm dealing with a bunch of different solar systems that are all different types of planets, you know, but, like, that's the other crazy thing is, like, when you think of Tatooine, like, that's a solar system in of itself because it has its own suns and all that stuff. Like, we don't really, like, I, I don't think, like, the Star Wars fandom is ready for something like this because you're going to get lost in that because you have to think of, like, all of the, like... All of the surrounding planets and moons and stuff that deal just like within Tatooine. Like, I don't even do we have all of that, all the information that comes with the star charts and stuff that just deal with. Yeah. With that is it. That's it. That's, I mean, that's be what, intense, Kevin. That's what outer rim, mid rim core. That's what it all is. And then out in the chaos is beyond that. that right. Line. Exactly. But all of those, all of those things, they have their own suns and they have their own moons. They have like there's going to be I think so it's going to show. It's going to show people the vastness of the Star Wars galaxy because I think I don't think people understand how big it is, um, and and it also that's how 
they're able to just create planets and drop them into the story. Right. Like today, I don't know if we have ever been to this planet that was in today's episode. Was it Drexus? Oh, I've never heard of it. That was Drexel. No, Drexus. Drexus? I think is it Drexus? Drexus was right. I think Drexus was right. I don't think I mean, we've been mentioned. It might have been in a comic or a novel or something very obscure, but it's never been mainline like like it was today. Yeah. Um, but it just shows you how big it is. So I think people will do that. It does say players will reportedly be able to jump between different systems and take part in very variety of activities in a quote vast galaxy end quote. Although it does doesn't seem to have an unlimited amount of planets like No Man's Sky does. So yeah. they did clarify that. So that's for those. Good. No, that's why I think it's going to be more like on rails where it's just like you're like okay i'm kind of like how it is in uh fallen order right where you're like okay i want to go to i want to go to this planet and so you like you jump and then you're going through you're going through hyperspace and then you show up like that's that's kind of like how i imagine it is like it's going to be like you've got all these like really like these big pois right and then you can jump to it and then you'll be able to like go from you know space into atmosphere land on the planet things like that but i don't know if they're going to give us like the ability to explore like you can in like star citizen or, or even like no man's sky. I think it's going to be more like holding your hands just because I don't think Ubisoft had they, Ubisoft has never made a game like this. They don't have the track record for right. an open world game of this, uh, of the vastness that is star Wars. Paul, Paul brought up SWOTOR and yes, you can go from planet to planet, but it's very quick. It's like a two second thing. You see it out your cockpit, you go to hyperspace and then they play a cinematic when you leave a planet and, arrive at a planet um but no, even i would want to go to like moons and stuff like if i if i show up into a system like right i want to go to this moon and yeah no i want to be able to fly down and land on that moon or i want to go down into like oh there's an asteroid belt that surrounds this planet i want to be able to fly through the asteroid belts and stuff there is a there is a dog fighting mode in swotor but every uh, travels on the rails like you go to your astro astrogation chart you click the planet you want to go to you click it you pay the money for fuel and then you it flies you there automatically you don't control any of that not like no man's sky where you're manually piloting yourself around mm -hmm. so it's it is and even when you get to the planet like it's just a piece of the planet that you can walk around i, I wouldn't they can use the word open world but i wouldn't call it open world in the sense of like that freedom that skyrim or red dead redemption offers that there's there's boundaries and they're clear. and that's the thing is like I, I keep on using star citizen as like my point of reference just because like that's the the most recent game that i've played that is space exploration open world and like star citizen has a problem with their planets where it's like you've got like a main poi you know, like you've got like a main city or whatever and then everything else is just empty like yeah. it's just the planet is just empty you've got these little like bases and stuff you can go to but they're all very cookie cutter they're all very much the same, like nothing really changes. And so it's like, what is like Ubisoft's open world, like vastness is the extent of Assassin's Creed. And oh, like, Far I want to take, yeah, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and The Division. Even then, Division. But not all of world. those games are still like, they have, they have limitations to how far you can go. And so like, that's the thing is like, like in, in, even in those games, it feels kind of cookie cutter to a certain extent. You kind of get, I, I, don't, I know you are different because you like to clear maps and stuff like that. But for me, I start to get bored in those type, in, like in Assassin's Creed, I just kind of just, I get lost. And so I'm really curious to see like, what are they going to do to keep people engaged? Um, is it going to be just like Assassin's Creed? Is it going to be a Far Cry game where we're going and we're clearing towers and opening up sectors of the map? Like what are they going to do to make this feel like a real like hey this is your star wars character and you get to like are we going to have the choice of becoming a jedi or do we get to be like it like it like kind of like in swotor like can we become a mandalorian can we become a bounty hunter like what what's the extent of that like and they said there's going to be an actual a full uh story alongside of it as well yes so that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be crazy like in so to have like a, a true single player experience on top of an open world experience like this is the perfect game like on paper it sounds like the perfect star wars game but i am very nervous about it um for those worried that this might be seem too big insider gaming also reports that the story will be in-depth and lengthy with a fully customizable protagonist that the player gets to choose the actions of if true it certainly seems to be a much more open game than other recent star wars projects so that's the extent of the leak. I have a feeling when it comes to the open world feel, it's going to feel like Far Cry. 
I will say this in Ubisoft's defense for the first time in my life playing an RPG. Mm-hmm. I felt like Valhalla was too big. I've, I've never uttered Valhalla those words. A lot. Yeah. I've never uttered those words in my life. I've always said, make it bigger, make it bigger, make it bigger. Valhalla, I was like, holy shit, this is a little bit too big for me. Yeah, I think it's because they added in the whole rating system with the boats and whatnot. And they wanted you to really like, I think they wanted to bring in that black flag feeling where you're like, oh, this is my boat. And I get to like have that, like that experience. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they made it so big. It's because like those river systems are just massive. You can just go on for forever. It feels like. Od- now, Odyssey felt like just the right size to me. Odyssey was like, a big open world. It felt good. I didn't feel like that. Valhalla getting before you unlock the travel points, getting from like the top of the map to the bottom was you're like, okay. Yeah. But um, now you're going to have a spaceship. So, I mean, imagine like the, the speed that you can travel. So hopefully, right. Which makes me like question, that. is it going to be bigger? Um, and then like we said, far cry would be the only other open world comparison for Ubisoft. Um, and the newest far cry map was pretty, pretty big. Uh, I, yeah. play, I put about 30 hours into it. I think this is going to be like Starfield. I think we're going to get a Star Wars Starfield game. Like, that's kind of <laughs> like, that's where I'm at right now. But Bethesda sucks. Well, okay, Bethesda's great with exploration. Combat with Bethesda is always laughable. Yeah, but their combat, they, so the stuff that they showed off looks really interesting because it's it's not like it, it's not like Fallout combat. No, it's it like felt more FPS like Star combat. Citizen. Yeah, it yeah. looks like normal, like traditional FPS combat with like an RPG element added on top of it. You got like the numbers that pop off and things like I that. I still don't think it will be this like revolutionary version of because Bethesda knows that like that's not their bread and butter. Their bread and butter is exploration, interaction. Yeah. Um, and it discovering things. Uh, that's that's where they rule the roost. So I don't think the combat's going to like change our lives, but I have a feeling it'll be baseline, a better system than fallout and skyrim um but for this ubisoft has a good track track record with combat and guns and you know between division far cry things like that it, it, they don't really have the same excuse that bethesda does so this is being made you know, by massive right ubisoft massive so i think you're gonna get a lot of it's it, probably if if I don't think you'll be able to wield a lightsaber in this game. I'm saying it now. I know that might no, be a crazy. I don't crazy... think so. I think this is going to be a non Jedi focused game. I think you could be like smuggler type person, Mandalorian trooper type situation where you have blasters and, you know, your blasters are, are probably rated similar to the way they are in, in division. I think you're going to see a lot of the division in this game. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, we said it's so uh, I think like two years ago now, if you made a game that had the the open world stylings of, of say, a Red Dead Redemption and had the ability to see other people, like even if it's just 10 people on a planet and had the ability like you you'd win you'd win if you did it right you'd win it would be one of the greatest star wars games of all time so i don't know we shall maybe, see maybe but, somebody listened to the podcast two years ago tim who knows but i agree with you on the whole like i don't think this is going to be a jedi force focused video game i don't think so either because like that means that they have to go up against respawn right and, like, and you don't, I don't think... you don't need to do that like you're not you, you have no point like they already Lucas have an established to. yeah no they want to be able to tell different stories and you can definitely tell the way that they're going recently with all of their shows is that they are kind of pulling away from the jedi and they're like they it's it's a part of the storytelling but it's not something that like they're really making as like the pivotal part of their storytelling so I, I, I'm down for I'm, I'm, I'm down for more in universe games and stories that don't focus around the lightsaber. Just make me a Bad Batch game that's like Republic Commando um, and uh, uh, has the ability to control people like Guardians of the Galaxy. If you did that for me, Lucas. Oh, so friend. so you just so you want Band of Brothers. You, you want. Yeah, you yes. want Band of Brothers, and, but in a Star Wars universe yes yes yeah. yep i want because uh, then you could switch between characters but you could also be like you know you like your hair top down you could like move you know, people around you click l1 and it. crosshair like takes out the guy all the way over there if you marked him and things like that you know and like hunter so and you, you click, want like marvel black sun meets for first person shooters yeah like you click the button and then hunter comes up and stabs the droid in the throat and stuff like that that mm-hmm. would be amazing but We'll see what happens with this. This this massive leak is is very interesting. I saw people um, very upset about it on the internet too. So it's making oh, me so it made me feel like upset oh, and why? No, 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 no. People within the industry were like, ah, oh, shit. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. And then I was like, oh good, that means someone's onto something. Someone hit a nerve. <laughs> yeah, no, no. That's it's it's uh it's one hundred percent absolutely just 
please, you're allowed to be upset. But the more upset you get, the more we think it's true. Just keep that in mind, too. So yeah. don't mislead us. Don't get me excited for no reason. Please, please, <laughs> Watch. We're going to find out this game was it's never happening. Please. I'm begging you. Um, we had a, a, this hit last month, but Tim and I just became or just noticed it. And I had seen some of the pictures, but the leaks from the Acolyte set. Yeah. So this guy hit me with the, oh, yeah, that dropped last year. And I'm thinking he meant, oh, this dropped like January of 2020. Not like mid-December. No, he meant like two weeks ago. So the stuff that I saw like on TikTok was fairly was fairly fresh. And the High Republic IRL clothing looks awesome. Looks yeah, we got so a, cool. We got a Zabrik in here. Yeah, we there's got a female Zabrak that's in there. Um, a there's Wookie. a Wookiee. Yeah, the Wookiee looks cool. Um, and then we got like some of the other actors, like they're in costume and it's just like everything looks really, there's one, there's one female character and she's got like these really cool, like, um, just like head growth. They look like they almost, they, they look like a hair piece, but they're like, they look more like bone and they're across her head and it just looks really, really neat. I think they're going all out with this acolyte stuff. We see, uh, Lee Jung Jae from, um, squid games in full high Republic Jedi. Mm -hmm. And it does look different. They do look different. They look more like Obi-Wan looks in the first, uh, in Phantom Menace than anything else to me. Well, well it just, it looked it, for me when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, this looks like the cover of right. the first high Republic book. Like when everyone had like the more like traditional, like they almost looked like the like when they're all holding like their medieval style lightsabers and whatnot, and they had like all these just like beautiful garbs on and whatnot, like that's that's what I was imagining, and they did a really really good job. Because we're only like we're what a hundred years before Episode One, right? Ish, something like that. Yeah. Right, it's very close. It is. So very yeah, close. so it's a it's a good phase of like from like the older stuff to the newer things. So like I think to your point, yeah, it, like it would make sense why Obi Wan's garbs would look a little more like that because they're so close to that very interesting yeah there's some interesting there's like a person in one of the shots there's a woman with red hair and she has like a bow yeah yeah she has a bow uh -huh. i wonder if that's like omega's energy bow yeah because we, we've never really seen that before we, saw, we no. saw that we've seen that on um oh crap on uh dathomir the Night Sister zombies, they had they had um those green bolts that they could shoot at you. Oh, there's um, two people with a bow. But this makes sense though, because like they with High Republic, they definitely leaned more into like the Knights or the uh King Arthur medieval vibe. And so yep. for them to have like Claymore style lightsabers, to have the bow look even like Cal Kestis in in Jedi Survivor is gonna have a broadsword. He's going to have this massive lightsaber. We've never seen a broadsword lightsaber before. So, like, that's really cool. They're starting to introduce new weapon archetypes into, into Star Wars canon. So, for that to show up, a, a, a bow you know, and a, a lightsaber, like, I don't know, what are they, they, they blasting energy from kyber crystals? Like, how the hell is that going to work? I'm very excited. I want to see, a, I wanna see a, a, a slingshot, a kyber crystal slingshot. I'm, I'm really hoping that we see this before the end of the year that's my hope you think that's we'll get hope. this for like for like christmas time i hope so i really do oh man bad batch is trending on twitter tim how cool is that we couldn't get andor to trend though <laughs> wow i didn't even think of that yeah i've had more people talk to me about bad batch like uh, organically on stream people it's so weird though kevin people are like do you watch the latest episode of bad batch like did you listen to the latest episode of star wars of scotch like what's that i'm like i don't know i've been talking about it for years <laughs> literal years so they're like hey tim i know you're a big star wars fan if you watch it's like we just talked about it these uh, yeah this is way more people talking about bad batch mm -hmm. than more people are talking about, about bad batch i feel like than they're talking about andor and it's just it's kind of weird. Look at look at the one I just sent you. It's like a picture in an arena, and it says Governor Groton's report after, and it says everyone is doing a great job except Cody. <laughs> <laughs> and funny. then there's another one that says Bad Batch spoiler is gonna be thinking about this all day, and it's Cody throwing the coin when Crosshair shoots it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, like that. That's living rent free in my head right now. So yeah. yeah. Um. 
Last bit of news today is, uh, and this this has been picking up steam, uh, rumor Star Wars project codenamed Ghost Track 17 from John Favreau and Dave Filoni is apparently going into production soon. So this comes from Star Wars uh, Newsnet as well. Um, there's a possibility that Ghost Track 17 is simply the working title for the fourth season of Mandalorian, but it differs from the previous code name of Huckleberry. Mm-hmm. But Bespin Bulletin reported in late 2022 to be hearing whispers about the new season gearing into production shortly after Skeleton Crew wrapped. Lucasfilm has been hiding several projects behind a thick wall around the Manhattan Beach sound stages where Favreau and Filoni have been almost uninterruptedly filming projects since September 2021. Whoa. I have a feeling it's just the new season of Mando, but that's just me. Yeah, I would I would go with that. But it's it's kind of cool to think that we could potentially get something else. I mean, like Ghost Track, that sound it's very weird. It doesn't really have the only thing that I think of is I think of Ghost, which then like starts to pull me towards like a rebels kind of thing. So I, yeah. I don't I'm not sure. We shall see. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, like it, it could it could be in reference to just like old uh, old terminology. They could just be trying to throw us off. They've done it before. They've done it plenty of times before. So who knows, Kev? I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, that's going to do it today for Star Wars and Scotch. We appreciate you hanging out with us for episode 114. Make sure you go check out Tim. He's Darkness429 live Monday through Friday at fb.gg slash Darkness429 around 9 a.m. Eastern. But he's going on vacation this week. So by the time you hear this, you won't be able to see him until next week. Sorry. See so you when time. are you back? Are you back Monday or Tuesday? We'll be back live Tuesday. Yeah. We're Tuesday, getting him so like back. Monday afternoon, but you know. So Tim will be live again next Tuesday, which is January, drum roll, 17th. Um, oh, it's right before my daughter's birthday. I asked her what she wants for her birthday. She's like, money. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, she's an I know. Now. I remember that age. But as a parent now, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, I want to get you something nice. I just want money. Yeah, she just wants you a gift card. You know how expensive gas is, Dad? I want money. Yeah, she's an adult now. She has adult so, worries. She's not like, oh, Dad, I want this cute purse. Maybe if she decided to take a job closer to her house instead of trying to drive an hour just so she could. Anyway, let's not talk about that. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to check out Kevin and all the stuff that he does at Rare Drop, you can head on over to raredrop.co. It's all right there. GCX yeah. uh, just Old go Fashioned Pot. Just go there. Go there, just you go can, there. You check it out there. It's just, it's all right there for you. All right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just go do that. Yeah. Make sure you check out our buddy Frank at comics. Like, uh, 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 one of the Uber nerds that I know, Frank, he's his technique on, on Twitch. Um, just guy knows comics and it's scary when I get into a conversation with him and he's in his chat and he's just like, Oh, and this, and I'm like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. well, I don't know anything about that. Frank, that thing you just said. <laughs> So, yeah, make sure you check out Frankie Comics, Old Fashioned, all the other stuff we're doing. Um, Cool, 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 cool. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week for Star Wars and Scotch, the next episode of Bad Batch, and whatever news comes our way. But until then, may the Force... I got this. I got it. May the Force be with you. Always.